example, prove that the square root of 2, that root 2, is irrational, i.e. that is, that it cannot be written in the form of p over q, where p and q are elements of the integer set. So integers being positive or negative whole numbers. So a fraction is a rational number. So we want to prove that root 2 cannot be written as a fraction. So what we do is we start off by supposing that root 2 is rational. So if root 2 is rational, it can be written in the form of p over q with p and q being elements of the integer set, so with p and q being positive or negative whole numbers, where p over q is in its simplest form, i.e., that is, p and q, so the numerator and the denominator, have no common factor other than 1. So we have p over q equals root 2. So we want to solve for p here. So we're going to start by squaring both sides. So p over q squared gives us p squared over q squared. And root 2 squared gives us 2. So the square root of 2 multiplied by the square root of 2 gives us 2. So we have p squared over q squared equals 2. And now solving for p squared, we have p squared divided by q squared. And the opposite of divide is multiply. So we multiply both sides by the denominator, which is q squared. So we get the p squared on its own. And then we basically just stick the q squared onto the 2. So we have 2q squared. So we've solved for p squared. So we have p squared equals 2q squared. So this we are going to call equation number 1. So this was step 1. So step 2. From equation number 1, so from this equation here, p squared equals 2q squared that we just created in step 1, 2 is a factor of p squared. So we have p squared equals 2 multiplied by q squared, so therefore 2 is a factor of p squared. So basically 2 multiplied by something gives us p squared, in this case it's 2 multiplied by q squared gives us p squared. So 2 is a factor of p squared. So 2 is a factor of p squared. And if 2 is a factor of p squared, hence 2 is a factor of p. If p is written as a product of prime factors not containing 2, then 2 cannot be a factor of p squared. So now we're going to let p equal to 2k for some k value an element of the integer set. So p is equal to 2 multiplied by something basically is what this means. So we said 2 is a factor of p, so another way to write that is p equals 2 times k. So p equals 2 times something. So 2 is still a factor of p. So by 1, by equation 1 that we have up here, p squared equals 2q squared, we get 2k squared equals 2q squared. So we swap that p for 2k, so if 2k squared, and that's equal to 2q squared, so 2q squared. Now 2 squared is 4, and k squared is is k squared, and that's still equal to 2q squared. And now we're going to solve for q squared. We want to get this q squared on its own. So at the moment, we have 2 stuck onto it, which means multiply. The opposite of multiply is divide. So to get the q squared on its own, we divide by 2. So we must divide the other side by 2 as well. So 4k squared divided by 2 is 2k squared. So we divided by 2 on both sides. So now we have the q squared on its own. q squared is equal to 2k squared. And this is equation number 2. We're going to label this as equation 2. So we have q squared equals 2k squared. 
which is very similar to what we had up here, which was p squared equals 2q squared. And since from this we were able to say that 2 is a factor of p, we can do the same and say that 2 is a factor of q. So if q squared equals 2k squared, thus 2 is a factor of q squared, so q squared is equal to 2 times something, in this case 2 times k squared, so 2 is a factor of q squared, and so 2 is a factor of q. So 2 is a factor of q. So up here we stated that 2 is a factor of p, and down here we're stating that 2 is a factor of q. So step 3, thus 2 is a factor of both p and q. So 2 is a factor of p, 2 is a factor of q, so 2 is a factor of p and q. And thus p over q cannot be in its simplest form. Because if 2 is a factor of them, it means 2 can be divided into them. So p divided by q is not in its simplest form because both p and q can be divided by 2. And this contradicts the assumption that root 2 can be written as a rational number in its simplest form. Thus, root 2 is an irrational number. So we were asked to prove that root 2 is an irrational number, written in its simplest form, and we have done so.